Hi everybody, it's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. I'm really happy to be here with you. We're all together here. We're learning about watercolor every week, every month, and every year, year after year. You're going to always get better at your watercolors as long as you're sticking in and doing the work every week. You know, you're practicing a little bit, you're drawing a little bit, you know, you, you're doing some sketches. Like I always say, you know, if you practice 10 or 15 minutes a day of your sketching, you're going to just really see a lot of improvement in your in your drawing skills and then of course you're going to be putting in some time every week uh, with your painting so you're going to be working with your watercolors every week and your sketching maybe you're going to uh, do some sketching and drawing during the week and then maybe on the weekends when you have a lot of extra time then you start breaking out your watercolors and you, and you work with your watercolors so that's really a good effective way to practice watercolor when, especially when you're first starting out and this is more of our extreme beginner series video but everyone can join along with this video I'm hoping that all of my regular people that have been here for many years with me will kind of work along and maybe pick up one of our prang palettes here that we have and work with this palette too as well it's a real fun palette you can maybe work with this if you've kind of been around a long time and been painting a long time in watercolors you can use this palette actually to do practice paintings you might be you maybe work on a little bit inexpensive paper and you work with these paints they're a little less expensive than your your fancier tube paints your more high quality stuff and uh, you know you never know you'll you'll see some real interesting things happen when you're working with some different paints as well so as long as you're if you're trying new things in watercolor in all respects whether it's subject matter um, artists that you like to follow uh, different artwork you like to try to emulate and paint new materials new paints new brushes if you just tr try to mix it up a, a little bit all the time it'll keep you more interested in the medium um, so you know you're gonna stick with your budget of course you know you have your budget you can only spend so much with your art supplies but you know you're always gonna try to put a little investment in your art supplies you know you might buy some really good paper uh, once in a while maybe when it's Christmas time you can have some uh, some of your family and friends and maybe they might buy you some fancier watercolor paper for a gift or whatever So you work it out the way you want to work it out But trying some new di and different things is going to be good So the people that are extreme beginners you're going to follow this video It's going to be really insightful for you and you're going to try to copy what I'm doing here And for those of you that have been around a long time and maybe you're wondering what the extreme beginners videos are you've, I'm sure you've seen them already but you'll kind of be able to kind of get some insights onto how I'm working with this new palette that we're working with on the extreme beginner series so let's start out and I'm just gonna go this is no scripts I don't have any teleprompters just Chris Petri here with you we're having a fun time I have my cup of coffee here and um, we're gonna have a nice uh, we're gonna have a nice time and uh, fun we're always having fun with watercolors we don't want to stress at all. Watercolors is our fun part of our life. We have stress with other things like family and work and, you know, the stresses of life and other th issues that we have, health issues, whatever it is. We all face these challenges in life. Let watercolor be the fun thing you do. Just have fun with it. If you want to do a ton of exercises like this and then, you know, once in a while you do a painting, that's fine too. Maybe, you know, because I did a lot of this myself when I was coming up through the ranks. So just a little tidbit of information there. I did a lot of this type of stuff, creating palette type um, charts and things like that of paints and colors and things like that. So let's get right into it here. So I just have a ruler. This ruler is really good if you can get one of these. This is like a tea, a tea uh, ruler. So you can set it on the edge of a watercolor block or the edge of your watercolor paper. And it gives you a perfectly straight line that's... Um, at a right angle, perfect right angle to your paper so that you have a nice straight line. So let's start out with the idea of we're going to work left to right. Now maybe if you're right-handed you'll work from this side of the paper and work this way. So if those of you that are left-handed you're going to paint with your left hand and you work this way. If you're right-handed you're working on the left side of the paper and you're working to your right. So I'm right-handed, I'm gonna start over here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just, to make it real simple, I'm gonna take um, this ruler and put it on the paper, and it's a T-type ruler, so I can set it right on the edge of the watercolor block like so. And then I'm just gonna, 
Before I do that, let me just measure over maybe like an inch. Maybe even, let's see, if I go to, yeah, two inches is fine. Well, let's use, let's use most of the paper. One inch. So I make a mark at one inch, then I set my T ruler like this, and I set it on that mark I just made of one inch. And you can make this an inch and a half and two inches, whatever you want. If you're good with math, you'll have more fun with this type of a part of the video where we're doing our like layout of our paper and our swatches we're going to make here, our color swatches. We're going to make some color swatches. And I would say let's make our let's make our swatches maybe the thickness of the ruler. You can use different rulers. I have a steel ruler here too like this. You can use these type of rulers. I've made rulers out of cardboard. You can take cardboard and use your cardboard um, for a ruler. Let's say like if you have a pad of paper like an office office pad like a, or the uh, you know writing paper office pad writing paper usually has that cardboard on the back. You can use that cardboard and make it into a ruler. You can maybe just when you're done with all the paper off of the pad, you save that cardboard, and then you can just take that cardboard and rest it on the paper and use it as a ruler if you don't really want to go out and buy a new ruler or you just, you know, you want to save money and you don't want to feel like putting $5 towards a ruler, you can use a piece of cardboard, no big deal. I've done that. So now I'm going to take this ruler, I'll use this one now, and I'll just make a line down this way. So now I have a line like this, a column, basically a column and it's about one inch, approximately one inch thick and we're going to use that for our swatches here. We're going to make these color swatches. So what I'm going to do now is just so I know to keep a little bit of space away from the top of the paper. I'll use the thickness of the ruler away from the top of the paper and the thickness of the ruler on the bottom of the paper, the edge of the paper that I'm using, like that. Now we have this area here, we're going to make our swatches. Now what I'll do is take an eraser and I'll just erase this up here so that we just have that column left and we'll have the clear border around it. So we have that like that and then we'll just erase this a little bit here too. And as you can see it kind of matches the, the palette somewhat. I didn't, I didn't mean to do that, but it just actually worked out that way, so that's good. So now what we can do is we're going to take our um, palette like this, and we're going to say how many paint colors are there. Well, we know we have two columns. Let's make another column over here. So we're going to do the same thing. Maybe we'll just put some space between these two columns so we'll make, a, we'll make a second one and we'll just we'll make some space between it let's say three inches approximately and you can do this a lot more loosely and you don't have to measure anything or use rulers you can just draw squares for your swatches that's fine you can even take this out of your case out of the um, palette like this you could take this and trace it that would work too so let's, let's do that over here, just so we can see how it works. Yeah, it works out pretty good. It's almost the same. I'm not going to trace this, but you could trace this. That's fine, too. You just get it to look pretty straight. Hold it down. You can even tape it down if you want, but you hold it down firmly. And then you just go around it and trace it with your pencil. That would work, too. So I'm gonna, I'm, this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to measure three inches. I'll use my T-square again or my T-ruler, if I can find it now. It's only been five minutes and I lost my ruler. There it is, okay, it was over there. So I just make the T-ruler across like this. And we're gonna go across just like we did before. Like that. Then we make our, we'll use our steel ruler here. Then we can use our T-ruler again, like this. These T-rulers are really excellent. You can line it up with that. This would be this ruler would be great if you're going to do like um, architecture. 
if you're going to draw like a house and then want to paint a house or a building, you want, you can have more fun with a ruler like this because you can really keep things perfectly at right angles and straight, the line straight. So anyway, that is that. There we go. So now we have our two columns, let's say, or our two very long rectangles that represent each of these. So if we're following along, we're just trying to replicate or mimic our palette on a piece of paper so that we can get better understanding and control of our palette colors. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Are you following that? Because last week we did a video similar to this and we did miss one of our colors and that kind of didn't turn out so great because we want to make sure we use all these colors and we match them to our palette we're eventually going to work into, which would be a palette where you're using like your standard Windsor and Newton or Holbein colors like I use. Uh, people use Daniel Smith and uh, M. Graham paints. So whatever paints, you'll eventually get into the paints and you'll get into all the different brands and not to, you know, make your mind all frazzled, but you'll eventually, as you're a watercolor artist, as you paint for maybe one or two years, you'll start to try some tube paints. You know, you pick up some tube paints and you'll start trying those out in the different colors and you'll have a great time and and then maybe you'll be looking at some of my other videos that I make where I'm using the normal tube paints in my palette and you'll be able to relate them to this one that you're using now when you're starting out. Okay, that said, we should take a break pretty soon, but let's see if we can grind on here and just maybe do a few more things. So we have our two columns set up and we just measured them real easy. We used our T ruler just to get straight lines so we and we have a we have a pad of paper that's kind of thick with a lot of sheets of paper on it, so this just, the T-square sits on, the T-ruler sits on that pad of paper straight, and we can get our straight lines like that. One, two lines, and then over here, another two lines, and we put three inches between them. So we put three inches of space between these two columns, we're calling these columns, and we made the columns about an inch thick which is about the thickness of a ruler. I use this ruler, which is a little bit thicker, for a little bit of a thicker column, but that's pretty much the real science behind this. And again, you don't have to do all this. You could make it more simple, pretend this is the same watercolor paper we're working on now, or watercolor pad, except you don't want to go through all the ruler issues, you know, and trying to figure out how to use the ruler and measuring. No problem. You simply take your rule, um, paper, you might have to turn it like this. This is an office paper, printer paper. You can use printer paper, by the way, incidentally, to do this exercise. This is fine. And you just take two of your, right out of the palette, you take it out. This is the Prang palette, Oval 16 palette. I forgot to mention that. It's the Prang Oval 16, 16 colors, semi-moist paint made by Dixon. These palettes are readily, readily available. You can get these, oh, you can get these at big box stores, you know, art stores like Blix or Michaels or AC Moore. You can get them on Amazon or eBay probably. You can order them through other places like Cheap Joe's, Art Supplies. A lot of places have these. So no worries, you can find this really easy. So we'll just take these two out and set them on the paper. And you can do that. And just set them right on the paper and maybe like this just like that. So you have some room to write colors on the right and the same thing, room to write colors on the right over here, right side of the columns. And you can just trace this just like this. Lightly trace around these. One over here on the left, you just carefully do it. Go around there, just keep a firm pressing. You firmly press on your, pal your palette paints here so that it doesn't move around on you. Just firmly, you don't have to press too hard, and then you just take your pencil lightly, very lightly, and just go around that like so. You might have to shift around carefully like that. And you do that. Trust me, I've practiced this like probably hundreds and hundreds of times, so um, don't worry if it, you, if, you, if it slips or moves around a little bit, no problem, you gotta practice at it a little bit. Not a, no problem, all right? So now you have your two columns, just like this, the same as here, except you're just, you're, you're on printer paper to, you know, and uh, 
you're using these to trace instead of measuring with your ruler and stuff like that. So that's an easier way to do it, quicker. Works the same pretty much. It's gonna, you're gonna get the same amount of information, the same amount of uh, knowledge from doing it either way, on printer paper or on watercolor paper with a ruler. Okay, so now we, we're at this point where we, we have a really nice two spots, two columns on our paper, watercolor paper. It's better to do it on watercolor paper. And we'll take a break. So let's take a break right now. Once we come back from the break, we're going to start drawing our swatches, our sections on here to match this. Once we have that done, then we're going to start painting. We'll paint these in, and then we're going to give these all names of colors. Um, we're not going to use the ones that are in here for right now, because we want to use the colors you're eventually going to work into, which are tube colors. So I'll explain that a little bit more, but right now we've done a lot of stuff. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back in just a second or two, and we'll continue working on this. And again, there's no scripts here. I don't have a teleprompter. I'm just working as we go, and we'll get through this, but we're going to do a lot more of a more organized, neat and clean version of our watercolor palette swatches on a piece of watercolor paper that you can put all the colors on, name all the colors, and you have this chart and you leave this in your studio and you can always refer to it. And you're always referring back to it as you work. And then eventually you're going to do new ones. So you're going to create new ones when you get a new palette. So if you pick up a new palette in six months from now or two months from now, whenever it is, you'll make another one just like this, very similar. For, for another palette you might buy. You might order it online, you might go to the store, or you might just stick with this one for now, for a year maybe or so. But remember, these charts are incredibly helpful for your, um, your knowledge of watercolor and your paints and your colors and how you're working with the colors that you are working with. And uh, believe me, it's gonna make things really easy for you when you start to branch out and use more colors if you want, or if you get a new palette. You'll already be in the, the system of creating your charts, your, your swatches, your color charts for your paints on a separate piece of paper so that you keep track of them. And then of course, when you start and you get a new palette, you'll create another one and you'll draw it out just like we drew this one out. And whatever your palette, new palette might look like, it might look different, it might be a rectangular palette this way, and the colors might be this way. Well, then you'll make a new one and you'll put it, you know, this way or whatever. So just to Make the note that each time you get a new palette, you're going to make a new swatch um, chart for your new palette with the colors that are in there. And then this way you have them as you go. And then you can always refer back to them. You can pick and choose. Maybe you want to add some new colors. Maybe you want to lose a few colors and just use a more smaller palette, less colors. All of that said, let's take a break because um, right now everybody's thinking they need to get a cup of coffee or something. And I'm going to do that myself. I'm going to enjoy a little bit more of my coffee and come back in a few seconds. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're getting back started again. We did take a break. Uh, I like to take breaks. Uh, I hope you'll take breaks too. I know I'm covering a lot of stuff here, you know, so... I'm giving you a lot of information. We're going over a lot of different things as we're going along, doing our color swatches here. So I, I, I can totally understand if you need to take some breaks. Maybe you break it up over two days. You know, maybe you watch a little bit one day and then, then a little bit the next day. But um, the main thing is, this is really fun. You have fun with these type of um, exercises, these type of um, charts that you're going to make for your watercolor paints. It's not stressful. You're not trying to make a great painting or anything and stressing over how it's got to look great and, you know, all that kind of a thing. You're just low stress, having fun with watercolors. You're working on your palette charts, which are very important. You want to work with your colors, understand them, figure out the names of them, how they, how they're spelled, you know, how you spell them, each of the names of the colors. All these type of things are important in watercolor because, you know, if you go to the paint store and you forgot to bring your notes with you, well, you'll remember the names of the colors that you're using and you'll be able to say, oh yeah, I did need a tube of cadmium red and I needed a tube of alizarin crimson and rose matter and I also needed a, a tube of French ultramarine blue and Prussian blue and also I needed uh, some sap green. So you'll remember your colors once you write them down a few times on your charts and you um, learn how to spell them and you see them over and over as you're writing them down, these color charts will really help you a lot. And they're fun downtime 
if you don't have a lot of time to do a painting, you, maybe you break out and do a nice chart here, like this. So, we're going to continue here. Now, the thing I wanted to mention is, this is a stock Prang palette like this. It comes like this when you get it, when you buy it in the store and you unwrap it, that's how it looks. Now, what I always tell every, everyone, if you've seen my other palette videos, I have a lot of palette videos, you can check those out. You just type in my name, Chris Petrie, palette, P-A-L-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, and you type my name first, Chris Petrie, C-H-R-I-S-P-E-T-R-I, palette, P-A-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. If you type that into YouTube, you'll see like five to ten videos I've done over the last three or four years or more, maybe five years. And you can watch all those videos on my palettes. I show you all the different palettes I've been using over the years, the colors I use, all of that good stuff. You can also email me um, if you just type, uh, if you just email me at chrispetri at att.net. I can send you some uh, palette charts, which are basically just print out. You can print them out on your printer at home. Or you can just leave them on your phone or your computer and you can just open them up and look at them. You don't need to print them, of course. But in any case, let's keep working. Now, this is my palette the way I chose to arrange my colors. This is the stock palette when, you, when it comes to you, when you get it, when you order it or you pick it up at your store. So what I want you to do, the first thing, if you're just starting out, you're an extreme beginner, I want you to just understand that the idea that I like to use in many fantastic watercolor artists, the, the really top professional watercolor artists these days, if you check out all the videos you can look at and you do research, you're going to find that most all watercolor artists, the professionals that are out there uh, today, including myself, we always use our palettes in an organized fashion, usually warm and cool. One side's warm, the other side's cool. So you sort of group your colors in two sections, warmer colors over here, and then they start to get cooler over here, the greens, and then the greenish blue, and then the blues, the blues, the purples, and then you have your color selections on your palette, organized left side warm, right side cool. So that's how I have my palette set up. So the easy thing you can do is right away is you say, okay, well, how do I do that? You're going to take this new, brand new palette you get in the mail. You have this. All you have to worry about is taking out these colors one at a time and transferring them to, uh, to the different positions that you need them to be set at. So we're going to show you how to do that in just a second. Okay. So what I do is First thing I do is I take my new palette like this. I'm going to eventually have it looking like this with all the worms on this side and the cools on this side. But before I do that, I'm going to take my piece of paper that we made over here, printer paper, take that. I'm going to use a small piece of uh, artist tape and just tape it down so it doesn't move around too much on my table here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to get a brush. I'm going to use the brush that comes with the palette, the Prang palette, this brush. I'm just going to wet the uh, brush. I have a container of water, fresh clean water. I have that over to the right over here. I also have a small sponge that you can draw it dry off the water a little bit on the sponge just so it's not dripping all over the place, the brush. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paint and just do a little bit up like this. And I'm just going to transfer these colors like this. I'm going to rinse my brush each time I go into a new color. I'm going to rinse the brush, touch the sponge, and then come over here. If I leave my water container over here, it's rinse the brush. Tap off a little bit of water on the sponge, and then go over to my next color. And I make a little bit of an oval, like these paint wells. Rinse the brush off good. Tap off a little bit of water. Go to the next color. Get a little bit of color there. 
and I'm just going to make a little oval like that. Rinse off the brush really good. Tap off a little bit of water on the sponge. Go down to my next color, which is a lighter orange. Like that. Make an oval. Just a little spot of color. Rinse off the brush really well. Tap off on a little bit of the sponge here. And we'll do our next swatch like that. See how easy that is? What we're doing is we're going to make sure we, when we take these palette colors out of these palette sections and put them into the other palette, arranging it the way we want to arrange it, we want to make sure we don't lose track of the colors. So this is what we do to avoid that. So we go like this. And again, I rinse my brush really well, tap off the water, go to the next color. And there we have it. So what we're doing is we're just taking our time. We're being very methodical, very organized on how we're gonna make sure we set up our new palette with warm on one side and cool on the other, just the way we want it, just like this, the way I have it set up. And this way when I'm painting, you can kind of see where I'm going with my brush. So if you ever have a question in your mind, what color did Chris just use in that painting? You'll see me going to the colors and you'll already know which one they are because you're gonna have this color chart at your, where, where you work in your studio, at your house, at your apartment, in your home, you're gonna have this chart made so that you know exactly what color I'm always using. So if I forget to say it when I'm working, you'll already know, oh yeah, I saw him dip over into that color and I know that one's, you know, a sap green. So we'll, we'll keep working, but notice what I'm doing here. I'm taking the stock paint coming right out of the palette when you get it at home, when you order it online, or if you go to the store and buy it, this is how it's all set up. So we're gonna transfer the same order of paints, just like this, and then we're good. This one's all set. Now we're gonna take this one. We're gonna move it over here. We'll move it over a little, and we're gonna do the next one over here. Okay, rinse off the brush really well. Tap off a little bit of paint, grab some of that black, and there we have it. Rinse off the brush really well. Check off a little bit of the water. Go into our beautiful brown, muddy looking brown there. Rinse off the brush really well. Tap off the water and we're gonna do white. Maybe we tap in a little bit of brown in that white just so we can see that. Tap, rinse off the brush really well, tap off a little bit of water, go right into the next color. Rinse off the brush really well, tap on the sponge, over to the next color. Rinse off the brush, tap off a little bit of water, next color. Rinse off the brush, tap off some water, go to the next color. Rinse off the brush really well tap on the sponge, go over to the next color. Okay, now we've taken both of these, put them over here, that's perfect. Now we know these are the colors we have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And of course, that's the oval 16 palette we're using. Okay, so now we have that. Now what I would do is before you change these around, um, you'd want to let them dry because you're going to get your hands all full of paint if you try to pull these all out now while they're all wet. So I would let these dry, so this might be something where you use a blow dryer to dry them off a little bit, or if you just let them sit like an hour, they'll dry off in an hour or two, and then you can come back and, and pull these out. But before we take these out though, we're gonna, we want to label them. So 
This is eventually the way we're going to set them up, like that. This is the way they come stock. Now we're going to just get a magic marker, and we'll be set. So let me grab a magic marker. Here we go. Oh, I thought I had one over there. Let me grab a magic marker over here. Okay, now, again, better off to let this dry a little bit. Maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take another quick break for five minutes. I'm going to blow dry this off so it's nice and dry, and I'll blow dry this off a little bit too, very lightly, very quickly, just so these dry a little bit. These don't, don't matter. They're not going to change. I'll put those over there. All right, so I'm just going to come back in about five minutes, take a couple sips of coffee, bust out the old blow dryer, I'm going to dry off these here, these swatches that we just made on printer paper. And then we're going to blow dry this off just a little bit so these are dry. We're not getting our hands all full of paint. And then we're going to label these in a few seconds. And then we're going to start transferring them and changing them around to uh, match the palette that I use all the time. Where I have my colors all lined up the way I like to have them all set up in the palette. Warm and cool, okay? Alright, so I'll be right back in just a second. Okay, we're back. I just used the blow dryer. So for about 10 minutes, I took a break. I had a little bit of coffee um, and I also uh, did the blow dryer to dry off these colors on this printer paper that we're making a, you know, a facsimile of this palette on this paper. And now we're going to start labeling these. So, um, um, last time we did a video on this palette just a short time ago. We labeled these colors, so let's start out and we're calling this one Alizarin Crimson. Alizarin Crimson. Also, we could call this Rose Matter. We're calling this next one Cadmium Red. Great color. Uh, we're calling this one like um, Cadmium Orange. This one we could call um, Cadmium Orange Light. It's usually spelled uh, L-I-G-H-T. L-I-G-H-T. This one we're calling cadmium yellow lemon. And this one we called olive green. Olive green. And the reason I can kind of really take these colors and really give them the, the names that I use on my normal palette, that I use at my everyday palette with my tube colors, is because a lot of these colors look extremely similar to the colors I use all the time. So that's just, that's how I kind of look at this. This is sort of how it's working out. This one here is a sap green, pretty much for me. I'm looking at it and just kind of matching it in my mind. See, I've been I, honestly I've been working with watercolors for like 15 years. So um, when you look at your colors all the time, and the same thing's going to happen for you. After working with watercolors, maybe like after two or three or four years, you'll get used to these colors so much that you'll just be able to like look out into nature and say, oh, that tree looks like sap green, or it looks like olive green, or that field looks like cadmium yellow, or that uh, that car that just drove by is a cadmium red. Oh, and that other red over there, that other car is more of an alizarin crimson rose matter color for, for cars. So you can start seeing all the colors out in nature and you'll you'll kind of see that and you'll know the names of everything and then you'll be able to relate everything so that whenever you go out and do a painting you'll just know right away oh I need to use a you know an olive green for that tree and that grass or a little bit of sap green mixed in and you'll see all the colors and you'll just know the names of them so it really you'll memorize it after a while but it takes some time so don't get frustrated or worried you take it as you go but eventually you will memorize the colors and, and you'll see them out in nature and you'll be looking at things when you're driving in a car or 
you're looking out the window and you're looking or you're out in the park, you'll see these colors and you'll just automatically know what they are. This one here we're going to call Viridian. Viridian, that's a Viridian. Okay, this one is a um, ivory black. Ivory black. And this one is a burnt umber. This one is, I'll call this titanium white. Could also be Chinese white. Those are the two whites I use mostly, so I would name them that. Those two whites, pre predominantly. Now over here, this one is a little different. I don't use this so much, but I do have it in tubes in my um, in my supply all the time. And that's this. I would call mm, that is. I'm going to call that lavender. Lavender. Now, this here I'm going to call uh, Ultra Marine Violet. I'm going to call this one Cerulean Blue. This one's going to be Prussian Blue. And this one is going to be French Ultramarine Blue. Marine Blue. So that's all the colors. And like I said, there is a color chart that comes in your Prang set. So when you get your Prang color set, you're going to get a, this set and it's going to give you and give you the colors but I want you to label them like this. Label them the way I label them here. Because eventually you're going to work into using tube colors after a while. Might as well just start getting used to the names of all the tube colors you're going to have to pick up eventually. So eventually you're going to have to get out to the store. Or you're going to be, you know, ordering some online here and there if you have to. Um, and these are the, the names of the colors you're going to have. And this matches all the colors I use all the time. So if you're following my videos and if you're going back into my videos, into my archive videos, you're going to notice that these are all the colors that I use all the time. I don't really change. All my palettes over the last five years have not changed. They basically stay all the same, these colors, which is easier for you too. So if you're studying my videos, you're always going to be using the same colors. You won't be, you'll be getting used to all the colors and memorizing them. And it's a lot easier than trying to figure out what color I'm using, or if I change my palette, which I don't do, I keep the colors the same. I might add a new color once in a while and try it out, but I'll always keep my basic palette the same all the time. So that being said, we're in a really good spot now. We have all our colors transferred over like this and like this. So we have all these transferred over and the names of them, and now we're Good. Now we're going to have to take these, rearrange them like this, which is the way I have mine set up, which is warm on the left, cool on the right. Not that hard of a thing to do. So what you'll do is you'll we'll take that, we'll take this out off over here, and what we're going to do is put this like this. Now this is how you do it. And as that song says, this is how we do it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're having fun here. <laughs> Have some fun. Sing a little song once in a while when you're painting. You know, when you're having fun with watercolors, sing a little favorite song of your own. And you'll, you'll find you'll forget about all the worries of the world and the life and all that. So we're going to take these and put them here. But the first thing we want to do is we want to match them over here. So you just take them out like this and set them right on top here, like that. And then you just go right down the line. Take them one out at a time. And then once you have these, you just push them from the bottom up, out like that. That's one. And then we'll do this one over here and push it out like 
that. Like that. Like that. Like that. Okay. Now we're going to set these back in. Snap those back into your pallet. Very easy to do. Okay, now what we do is we take this pallet like this and we just want to match these. So we notice that the first color up here matches this one here. So alizarin crimson rose matter goes in this first slot here. Then we hold up the palette here and say, what's the next one? Cadmium red matches that, so that matches. Cadmium red, that goes next here. Then we look at the next one and say, oh, okay, this is cadmium orange. This matches cadmium orange. That goes next. Cadmium orange light looks like here. Next to one here. Yellow. Cadmium lemon yellow goes there. Then next is burnt umber. So we go over here and match it up and say that looks like burnt umber. Is it? Yes, burnt umber. Here. Let's look at the next color. Um, that looks like the olive green. Is it the olive green? Let's take a look. Yes, it is. Olive green. So you just match your colors over to this palette, which I like. Is, this is the palette. And we'll, we'll recreate this one again on another piece of paper so that you can see all the colors. I'll write them all down just like this, in this order. So you'll have that. So then we have this and we're looking for what matches next. After, after olive green, what goes next at the very end slot? That is sap green. Does it match? Yes, it matches. Look at that. Perfect. Now we're going to go on the other side. What is this? Uh, Viridian green. Match the... Ver oh yeah! Perfect! Viridian green. That goes there. We're matching this palette. Remember that. We're matching this one so that this one looks just like this one. Okay, so the next one over here is... Looks like Cerulean Blue. That's what it is, cerulean blue. And if you have a doubt, add a little bit of water to it. Add a little bit of water to it. Perfect, you see that? I added that little cerulean blue. And if you have a doubt, you just try it out. That rhymes. If you have a doubt, try it out. Okay, now. What's the next color we have here? This looks like French Ultramarine Blue. Let's see, let's do it. Let's take this, go into this palette. Maybe that's Prussian Blue. I think that's Prussian Blue, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Prussian blue. Okay. Now, next is one, two, three, four, fourth, fourth row up. One, two, three. There. What's that look like? Let's take a little bit here. And that looks like French Ultramarine Blue. And that is. What's next? Ultramarine Violet. Next one, Lavender. Yep. 
Lavenders next. And then we got the last two, white, Chinese white, or titanium white, and ivory black. There we have it. So by using this method, you can take the palette that it comes with stock and then switch it over to my palette, which is the way I have it set up. So now we're going to make the chart here the way my palette is set up, and I want you to set your palette up the same way, and it's just like this. And again, we matched this palette that I have. That's my palette set up the way I set it up. Warm on the left, cool on the right, and now we have this. We just made this, we transferred it over so that we took our brand new set of paints and just made sure we carefully set it up over like this. And then we're, we're good. Okay, now we're going to do this chart over here. So we're going to make a better chart and then we're going to rename it. So now this is going to be the Prang Palette Oval 16 by Dixon Technologies Company. Ticonderosa company. They make palettes, they make pencils, they make a lot of art supplies. So we're going to use this. This is the way your palette's going to look when you're finished. And this is the way I use it every time when we come onto YouTube and do paints for YouTube's uh, Extreme Beginner series. This is my palette the way I always use it. And this is, I'm taking the new palette and setting it up so it's just the same and that's how it is. They completely match 100%. And then we're going to Take that, put it over there. We're going to take another break because we got to have breaks. <laughs> We're going to take another break. Okay, so take lots of breaks as you're doing this exercise. If this takes you all day, don't worry about it. Let it take, you know, let it take your whole day of just doing a great chart like this, a nice, beautiful watercolor chart on watercolor paper. You'll have this forever. You'll leave this in your studio and you'll have it for two, three, five, 10, 15, 20 years, you're going to have your chart here, your watercolor chart. And it's going to have your first chart you ever did with your Prang palette. You might keep you might keep buying these Prang palettes and have them for practice and fun while you move up to another palette and you'll make another chart for your new palette that you create eventually. But for right now, you're working with this one and we're going to get this one onto a gorgeous chart for yourself. You'll have this in your studio your apartment, your place, your house, your home, and um, we'll get started in just a second. I just want to take another quick break, and if it doesn't, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a break. Thank you very much. And also, too, hey, if you don't, if you haven't subscribed yet, I always mention, please subscribe. The subscribe button is just on the right-hand side below the screen here. On the right-hand side, you'll see the subscribe button. You just click on that button. You'll be subscribed. You're going to get all the videos every week, week after week, month after month, and year after year. We're here, we're doing nothing but watercolors, mixed media, wash, you know, we're using all watercolors, ink and wash with watercolors. Um, we do every method and every technique in, in watercolor painting, and that's all you have to worry about. And then, uh, you know, if you want to eventually go on to oil painting or acrylics, you can do that too. But everything watercolor right here is all you need. You click on the subscribe button, you'll get all the videos, and as well, um, if you're subscribing you click on the um, notification bells there's a little bell and you just click all notifications that's all it is all notifications and this way you'll be alerted every time a new video comes in you'll be able to um, watch that video you'll know it's coming in just at that time so you can watch it first one time and then maybe you sit down a little bit later in the day or the next day and you watch it again slowly full through and you maybe start and stop it as you go to do the paintings that we're doing, the drawings and paintings, or we're doing exercises like this. And you do the same thing, you just start and stop as you go. Maybe watch it full through one time though first, so you prep yourself. You watch it one time full through, then you second time you go slowly and stop and go, take the breaks, keep, you know, keep working as you go. Trust me, you're gonna get absolutely good at watercolors if you just stick here every week and keep going over what we're doing. Even if you're just watching sometimes and you don't have the time to paint and draw, you'll still be learning as you watch. Watching is incredibly important. I've watched thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours of videos on YouTube when I was coming up through the ranks and as a watercolor artist. As well, I bought DVDs of 
watercolor artists, our great watercolor artists of the day, the pros that are out there. So trust me, watching videos is incredibly important. So watch your videos all the time. And then also too, you know, you want to practice along with them too as much as you can, as much time as you can put into it. Do that too. And always have a sketchbook and some paper around and draw and sketch as much as you can every day. All right, I'll be right back. I'm just going to take another quick break. And I promise uh, we'll be right back in just a second. Hey everybody, uh, let's uh, get back started again here now. Um, the main thing I want everyone to realize too when we're doing these type of uh, color swatch charts, these color charts with our palettes and things, be creative, do it your own way. Don't necessarily do it the exact same way I'm doing it. You, you can do it, you know, uh, however it makes sense for you to do it in your own uh, creative way. You're an artist, you, you know, you'll figure out a way to do it creatively. Um, right now, I realized I had a little bit of a change in plans here. I wanted to get my space divisions here inside these two columns the same as this. So instead of trying to, you know, maybe measure this, or the main thing is we can use one of these out of our palette to, um, to measure these and get our slots and our swatches within this. So I'm going to take my palette since we already took my palette with all my colors the way I have them set up in my normal palette with the way I you know of course warm on you know warm on one side cool on the other we already have completed this where we trans uh, we change this over like this so that this is now my palette it's the same as this one that I normally use so now that that's done I can take this one and pop all these paints out and what we'll do is we'll use this as our template to draw the ovals in this paint chart we're doing so see how I did that I just I'm using this as my like stencil so we're just basically using this empty palette section as our template. This way we don't have to sit there and measure. But if you're really good at math and you like to measure stuff and you could make all, you could make eight space divisions in this column that we drew. But I'm going to do it the faster way, the easier way. I'll take my um, pencil and just hold this down lightly but firmly so that it doesn't move. And I'm just going to do this very lightly. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. If you want to make it more perfect, make it more perfect. I'm just doing it this way. I'm carefully holding it. The key when you want to move is you just hold it down, right? You're holding it down. You're doing your drawing like this. Now if you're going to reposition, you just got to make sure you go down on the other side, hold it firmly, then you can lift up this way. Then reposition. Then you can go the rest of the way like so. There we have it. Then we go over here, do the same thing, press down on the template, you might be able to do the whole thing without having to lift up at all. Okay, there we go, perfect. Okay, now This part's easy. Uh, this is the simple part. Again, we're going to do the same process. We're going to take our watercolor. We're going to do our rinse off our brush really well. I'm going to change my water. Especially when you're doing swatches, you want to change out your water a lot. You don't want muddy water in your bucket, your water pail, your water bucket. Your water container, your water glass, whatever you're using for, you know, you can use a glass, one of those heavy bottom glasses where it's got the really thick glass on the bottom. That's good to use if, if you haven't purchased a water pallet yet. You can use these plastic pallets, these collapsible plastic pallets by Holbein. They're great. These are fantastic. You can travel with these, bring them to the park, on vacation, on weekend getaways, around the house you can use them in your studio, your apartment your home, wherever, 
And then, you know, I use this. I like this a lot. This is a nice canteen container. Um, fresh water. Use lots of fresh water when you're doing swatches because you don't want to contaminate the colors too much with muddy looking water. So there we have it. Rinse off the brush really well. Tap. And then let's go top to bottom. So for this, we're just going to And then you just have fun. Look at the look at how this works. <laughs> Isn't that great? You just have a fun time filling in the the oval like that. That's done. Next one. You go all different ways. You take your hand, you rest your hand on the paper. And then you just go this way. You lift your hand up, maybe you rest your hand down over here lower go over this way. thing is you want to move around your hand and do different moves like that. Rinse off the brush really well. Dry, uh, tap off a little bit of water. Burn umber. Like that. And you can mix it up too. Make it darker and maybe make it dark on the right, on the left. Over here, make your paint swatch darker over here. If you want to kind of get the feel for the the uh, lighter version of that color, that's more pretty much straight paint right out onto the paper. Dry off the brush with a little bit of the water left on there, and you can and you can just smooth that out over there on the right. So you get your darker tonal value over here, and then your lighter tonal value on the left. You can go back over here and do some. Okay, rinse off that brush really well. Tap off the water. Let's go right into our next color here. So we're just going one at a time. Keep a, keep a really good look on what the colors are, each one as you go. Okay, so that's cadmium yellow lemon and off the brush notice very little water in here I, I'm always tapping off the water on my sponge then just using a little bit of a damp brush here to get this so you're really getting that really true color, the true pigment and color right from that palette onto that paper. And then you dip again. Now you just have a damp brush and now you use a damp brush to make that lighter bit of wash over here on the right. So you can kind of see the, the variation you can get with this color. Okay, and then you're going to go over to the darker version of that orange or the, you know, more uh, darker tonal value of that color. Rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and then use that lighter look. Okay. Just having a really fun time doing this. This is really enjoyable. It's relaxing. And then again, more just a damp brush with not much paint to get that lighter tonal value. You can always take a tissue and bunch it up like this, a tissue, and you can actually lift up a little bit. To get it even lighter if you want, like that. But you can try to do it with the brush and the paint if you can. 
and it always dries lighter too. This will dry a lot lighter. So let's do this one here. This is so enjoyable, relaxing, peaceful. Rinse off the brush, take the water off the brush with the sponge, and then with a damp brush, you just slowly smooth out that paint with the damp brush, and you get that lighter look like that. Okay, and then we're going to move over here starting up top again and then working our way down this is the ivory black dry off the uh, water off the brush we're going to go in and get some white Okay, and then next, rinse off the brush really well, tap on the sponge, damp brush. Same thing, rinse and repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. It's repetitive, so we're seeing in watercolor that you, a lot of things are repetitive, you know, they just, certain things that you do in watercolor are the same over and over and over. We're doing the same thing over and over and over, no change whatsoever. Rinse really well, tap off brush, damp brush. That's the same every time, but the colors are changing. But this is the same every time. Rinse off the brush really well, tap off the water, then we're going into different colors. So now you see techniques and methods are really important because you're doing the same thing over and over. So if you can get those methods and techniques that you need to get um, memorized and working for you, then once they become like automatic pilot for you, you don't have to worry. Same thing with my brush, how I'm using my brush. This is the same every time. Rinse and rinse and rinse, check off a little water. I do that every time, thousands. I've done that millions of times probably. Possibly millions of times I'd have to use a calculator and try to figure it out, but... <laughs> You know, rinsing off the brush really well, tapping on the sponge or tapping on the tissue a little bit. That is uh, the same over and over and over and over again. Um, so with this, I'm going to go to the next color. One, two, three, four, fifth color. One, two, three, four, five. Rinse the brush really well, check off some water, and we go with just nothing but a damp brush over on the right side of this swatch, so you get that lighter feel over there on the right. And that's perfect. Okay, now we'll go over to the next color. I forgot what I was trying to say before. I, I was mentioning something and I lost my train of thought, but... Certain things are same, the same over and over again. I 
I use a little bit of tissue if you want to lighten up one of these. Okay, second to last. And so if the brush really well, tap off the water on a sponge. And we go right over there like that. Perfect. Okay, one more to go. Rinse off the brush really well. Check off some water so you have a damp brush only. And use the damp brush to lighten that up and move that paint over a little bit for a lighter tonal value. So the light would be coming this way. And there you have it. You have all the colors that I use in the same order. We'll do the labeling next, but we're going to take a break. I'm going to let this dry. So I'm going to let all this dry. It takes about maybe 10-15 minutes to dry. Then we'll come back and we'll uh, draw some pencil lines here and we'll draw it we'll, we'll, we'll write in our colors our colors that we're going to eventually be working into which are our tube colors and um, and that's it and that's the same colors as this first chart we made except we have a different order now but the same the same colors right so you can use this if you want or you could just maybe better it's better to just follow along on this but I did make this first one so you can kind of see when you get your palette brand new and it's not changed at all, that's what you're going to see and the colors. Now we're going to do this. This is the new palette. The way I set it up, I take these all out and rearrange the colors and now you get this. And now we have this same thing transferred over to here onto our color chart. And this is our color chart. The colors in this palette, the Prang Oval 16, Oval 16 Prang watercolor set. Rearranged, we rearranged the colors the way we should have it set up warm on one side cool on the other You can swap it around cool on one side cool cool on the other warm on one side. You know you can you can maybe have your cool colors over here instead of the warm over here But I think you should set it up this way the way I have it warm and cool on either side But if you want to leave it the way it is I wouldn't suggest that because the logic behind this is Whenever you're painting you're trying to focus on your painting so if you're painting a beautiful painting, you're trying to focus on your painting and what's going on on your paper and your painting. That's your focus. Your focus doesn't want to be over here on the palette. Basically, what you want to do is eventually, after months and months and months of using this palette with all the colors in the same order, eventually you're going to memorize pretty much where all these colors are so that when you're painting, you're just going to be painting your painting and you're going to know right where to go to get your color because if you're over here focusing on this, you're going to say, oh, I need a cadmium orange and your hand is automatically going to go over to the cadmium orange place pretty much right around there and you pick it up and you're going to go back into your painting so if you can set your palette up so that you always know well oh the generally you always know your warms are on one side and your cools are on the other you're halfway there when you go to move your hand over to your palette to get your colors does that make sense can you see how that works the basic thing is you don't want to be trying to look around and find colors on your palette when you're painting. You want to stick with keeping your focus on the painting because watercolor especially, it dries fast. So you want to spend all your time working quickly on your paper and not getting caught up scratching your head for five minutes wondering what color you got to go to next over here. You want to keep your colors the same all the time once you have it set up like this. Keep it that way all the time for forever. And then you'll always know, eventually you won't even have to look. Eventually you'll just be painting and you'll just be like, green, I know I need to go there. Red, I need to go there. You won't even be thinking about your palette over here. You'll be painting and focusing all on your painting and you'll automatically go right to the color you need and pick it up and come back over and paint. So again, I want to kind of really stress that your palette's really important and having the colors in a certain order is really important, very important. And I've learned that from great, great artists over time, they'll always tell you that if you talk to any of the great artists out there, the pros, they'll tell you, keep your palette the same all the time. 
you keep using the same colors mostly for the most part and keep them arranged the same way and if you can even help it try to keep them separated you know warms in one area and cools in the other this way you're already kind of going to know where you're going uh, if i need something in anywhere in the reds and oranges i'm going to this side over here if i need a cooler color i'm over here you kind of follow that line of thinking you'll really be much better off and you'll get to your focusing on your paints and your your uh, your painting much more quickly and instead of fussing around and, and thinking too much on where you got to find your colors over here so i hope that really helps I'm going to be right back in just a second. We're going to write down all our colors over here. We'll get it all done in a few more minutes, and then we'll be done, and you'll have these great color charts, and you'll do this for all your palettes. Wherever you get a new palette, new chart, and you do it the same way. Okay? All right, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and we're going to finish up our palette chart here. So I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit here. That's a little bit better. All right, so I zoomed in. So we're going to do our, um, we're going to do the um, color names next to the colors, swatches. So I, again, I'm using this uh, T-square ruler. You don't have to use this at all. You can just use a regular ruler. You can use a piece of cardboard um, you know, whatever you have handy, doesn't matter, not a big deal. I'm going to use this, and I'm just going to kind of set this up alongside the left here. And I'm going to put them right along the bottom of the swatches, and I'm just going to put a light pencil line so that I have a line to draw my the names of my colors on. So I'm just going to go right down the line, light pencil line. I'm going to eventually erase that. And as you can see, that's all I'm doing is a super light line so that I can write the names of the colors in an organized, neat fashion. Because this this swatch, this ch color chart I'm making, this is gonna I'm gonna keep this in my studio, and this actually is the first one I made of this palette. So I'm gonna actually save this one and keep this in my studio next to my art table here that I work on for YouTube videos. And I'll always have this chart to reference as I'm looking at it. And we're going to make spin-offs of this one, too. We're going to take these colors and mix and, and mingle them together to create other colors that we might like. But we do have a great representation of the colors we use on a normal basis on my normal everyday channel. When we're just doing our regular videos, you know, when we're just doing our standard videos here on my channel, the YouTube... Um, channel that we normally have we're just doing our regular palette with our squeezed two paints and our palettes that way now that we have our extreme beginner series we're making this second color chart and that's going to be this palette over here on this chart and then we'll always have this to reference and if you want you can take the colors I use on my other paintings and make charts of those so now that we have a light pencil line on this, I might use a medium size. Uh, so I'm not going to use the really super heavy Sharpie, but let's use the super heavy, heavy Sharpie to make the title of our page here. So we're going to make a title on this at the top of our page. Light pencil line across like that. And we'll, we'll create our Title. And this is going to be our Prang. Prang palette colors. And you can see nothing too fancy. I'm not, I don't have the neatest of handwriting. It's not too bad, I guess. <laughs> And let's see, palette colors. There we go. Prang palette colors. And you could put over here oval 16. 
maybe you have, I know some of you have uh, commented in the comments section that you have a different praying palettes. You have other praying palettes other than the Oval 16. So you would create maybe one color palette chart like this with the palette you're using right now. You might have the 10 colors or the eight colors, and then maybe you'll eventually get this one or not, I don't know, but eventually you might, and then you'll create another. Again, always make a color chart for every palette you have. And then again, we're gonna go right down the line here. We're saying this one is sap green. I hope this, you can see this on the video. Let's take a look here. I can look in the screen. Yeah, that's pretty good. So hopefully you're seeing this. It shows up pretty good. Sap green, olive green, This is burnt umber. And I'm just going right down the line. And again, I've memorized my colors so much that I just don't even have to reference anything. I'm just looking at the colors and going, yep, that's a cadmium. Cadmium yellow lemon. This one's cadmium orange. Awesome color. This one is cadmium orange. And we can call this one cadmium orange light. And this one's cadmium orange. And this one we know is cadmium red. And we know this one is lizard and crimson. And this is also rose matter. We use that color as well. Very, very close to alizarin and crimson, just a little bit lighter in tonal value, great for flowers. And then we have up here, we have um, ivory black. Then we have either, um, let's go with uh, our normal, this is uh, titanium. white where we can also call this Chinese white this one is lavender this one we were calling uh, ultramarine violet then this one is French ultramarine blue. This is Prussian blue. Awesome color. And cerulean blue. I use that all the time. Cerulean blue is like a go-to color for skies all the time. Cerulean. Cerulean usually is just named cerulean. So we can leave it like that, but we always know that's a blue. And then viridian. Viridian is green. And they just call it, you know, the, the names of these colors are how you would order it. Or if you see it on the tube colors, if you look this up or whatever on a, on a, on a um, website that sells art supplies, you know, you just type in Viridian, you're going to see Viridian. It doesn't usually say green, but we, you know, we know it's green. Viridian's a cool green. It has a lots of blue in it. So it's a very cool green. And, uh, okay, so we have all the colors here. So that's our palette. This is the way I use my palette all the time. I, I would never change this palette at all. 
whenever I'm using my Prang 16 palette, this is exactly how I'm going to have it set up every time. Never going to change it. If I'm painting 20 years from now using my Prang palette, it's going to look just like this, same order. And this way, whenever I'm painting, I'm not even thinking about my palette. I'm thinking about my painting, focusing on my painting. And my hand's just going over here, and I know exactly where to go. Kind of like shifting gears in a car or pushing the gas pedal and the brakes. You don't think about it. It's just natural. It's all automatic pilot. And that's how you want to have your palettes, automatic pilot. So you're not looking around going, where did I put that? Or where is that? Or how did I even add that one in there? Is it in here? Is it keep your palettes the same all the time? Makes your life so much easier. Okay, so this is the video we covered from the very get-go to the beginning here now, or to the very end of the video, how to set up your palette, your prime palette, um, in an organized fashion, how to set up a great, how to create a great um, color chart of your palette so that you always have this for reference. And uh, it's up to you, you're the artist, you can create um, this paint chart you know, different than I did mine, but I'm just showing you how I did mine here. You can do spin-offs of this. You might want to do it a lot looser, you know, just have your paints. Maybe you're doing it on 45 degree angles with your colors and your names of your paints on a 45 degree angle, or maybe you're just going to do it, you know, scribble in the colors and make the swatches all different sizes. That's all fine. You do it the way you want. You're the artist. You're the best judge of what's going to look good and work for you. But this is how I just did mine. Hope this gives you some good ideas. And of course, once we're done with this, I always, you know, I zip off the, I zip off the pencil lines. Everything's dry, no problem. So I just take off my pencil lines off everything, like that. And then what we'll do, maybe in, a, in an, another video soon, coming soon, we are, um, we'll make, we'll we'll mix these colors here and there together and we'll create other colors. So we'll take this paint selection here and then we'll kind of make other colors from these. And there'll be colors that are popular that you'll see in the paint tubes that other, car other artists might use. And I thank you so much for coming by and uh, painting and uh, doing our color charts here. A lot of fun, no stress. Take your time, take lots of breaks, take as much time as you need to get these, do a couple of them. If the first one turns out not so great, no problem, do another one, do three or four. If you make a mistake maybe and you mislabel something, no worries, you can always use some whiteout tape. So if you make a mistake when you're labeling something, you can always, let's try one, you could just say, okay, sap green, I made a mistake and I called it olive green. Well, no problem. You could just uh, take your white tape like that. You can get this at any store online. You can get these at the um, art stores. You can get them at um, your um, Walgreens or CVS's or your places where you buy your um, cosmetics. And you can maybe if you're picking up, uh, it's, you know, things like uh, medications or uh, toothpaste, whatever it is. You know, you go to those. Uh, Pharmacy, pharmacies, the pharmacy stores, you get these at the pharmacy, you get these anywhere, whiteout tape. And if you have a problem where you label something incorrectly, you just white, white tape it like that, and you just go over the top of it. Like that. The only thing is you really wouldn't be able to do this with the color paints, I don't think. It would be really tough to paint over this with watercolor paint. So <laughs> try to get your paints pretty close to accurate. And then, you know, if you do, if you have a problem with labeling these, no worries. You can kind of use this to fix some issues if you have to. Okay. All right. Thanks so much again for watching. And again, if you haven't subscribed, right down below on the right-hand side, there's that subscribe button. And um, please hit the thumbs up if you like this video, of course. Um, we make videos like this every week. We're doing videos on technique methods. Um, we're doing uh, also our normal paintings every week, least seascapes, landscapes, flower paintings, figure paintings, cityscapes. We do everything watercolor here, so please keep coming back. We have such a great time here all the time on this channel, so um, come on back. And uh, again, if you subscribe on the right-hand side below, 
you'll make sure you'll be sure to get my next video an alert on your YouTube channel so that you know we're here and we're working hard to get you the best videos we, we can make with all the best of the knowledge that you need to have for watercolor techniques and methods and the watercolor um, for the watercolor medium you have to have solid knowledge of the basics and we cover the basics here all the time okay so everyone come on back subscribe thumbs up and uh, please if you can um, always remember um, have fun with this don't stress over it keep practicing drawing as much as you can do some drawing and sketching every day five ten minutes um, on a tissue paper if you have to whatever it is and then on the weekends you know when you have more time you do you do your painting you do these charts you know you do other paintings and stuff we're doing lots of great paintings we did some good stuff the other day so we did this the other day right we did that we did this so practice these on the weekends practice these on the weekends the paintings and then you know during the week you do some sketches and some drawing with pencils or pens or office pens and um, you know and then you do the uh, do these two on the weekends do some palette charts your color charts for your palette and uh, again we're having lots of fun here have fun happy painting everyone we'll see you on the next video bye bye